Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET Web API. So this video is about action methods in Web API. In last video we saw what is Web API controller. Now we are going to study what is an action method and then after we will see practically how to create an action method. So let us start. As I told you in the last video that all the public methods of a controller are called as action method. Now what is the role of action method, right? So basically what happens, so whenever a HTTP request is made to the Web API server, basically that HTTP request get mapped to action method. Okay, and again it depends on what is the URI specified and what is the HTTP verb mentioned. So we already studied what are the HTTP verbs. If you remember get, post, put, delete, few more HTTP verbs are there. But based on your HTTP verbs and the URI, HTTP request get map on action method and that particular action method get executed and then after it generates a response and that response will be sent to client. Now, there are default action methods and as well as custom action methods. So default means if you create any method with name get, post, put, delete that are called as default action methods. Okay, means strictly you have to use these names only. Get, post means whatever the HTTP verbs we have, the same name you have to assign to your action methods. I just mentioned few of the HTTP verbs here. So do not think that there are only four HTTP verbs. These are more frequently used HTTP verbs. That's why I mentioned these words. So if your action method name is get, post, put or delete, then it will be called as default action method. But we can create custom action methods also instead of default action method. So whenever you are going to create any custom action method, your method name must start with HTTP verb, okay? And suffix can be anything. Means for example, get product, get all, get student, post product, okay? Like this, means your method name must start with any one of this verb. Or if you still do not want to use verb, what you can do? You can apply HTTP verb attribute to the method. So let us see this in action. I am switching to Visual Studio. So in last video, we already saw how to add a controller. We added one controller also. Now we are going to add an action method. So here, what will I do? I will create one public method. And time being, I am keeping the return type as string. Okay. And here I will say get. And then I'll say return, sorry, return hello world. Okay, so this is my default action method because its name is itself a HTTP verb. Now suppose if I want to create a custom action method, what will I do? I'll say get greetings. Okay. So if you want to create a custom action method, just remember that it must start with HTTP verb. So here it is starting with get verb. But still, if you do not want to start your name with HTTP verb, in that case, what you can do, just specify the name that you want say greet and then after you have to decorate your action method with http verbs so here i will mark this method as http get now what is the meaning of that basically whenever your application is running and if any client application makes a get request to this product controller this greet method will be called so in this way, your action method get executed. Now let us see few more things related to action method. So the next important point related to action method is its return type. 
So what kind of data action method can return? So it can return void. It can return primitive type of data as we did here. We return string type of data which is primitive type means we can return string, we can return integer, we can return float. So all these ready-made types are what? Primitive data type or it can return a complex type also. Now what it means suppose you have created a class and you want to return any object of that particular class so you can return that. The third option is that you can also return HTTP response message. So here what happened along with your data you can also return a specific code if your request get executed successfully. In that case along with your data you can also send a status code as 200 which is nothing but a OK. Suppose you are finding anything and you do not get it in that case you can return not found status code. So that is the advantage of returning HTTP response message. So along with the data, you can also return the status code, which helps us to determine whether our request is handled successfully or not. Now the last type is IHTTP action result. This was introduced as part of BBPI2 and like a HTTP response message, right? It also returns the HTTP response message, but it is quite friendly to use IHTTP action result instead of HTTP response message. So if you are already familiar with the action result class in ASP.NET MVC, you can easily relate it to this one. Okay. So in upcoming video, we are going to see how we can return a data from action method and how we can test that part. So if you have any questions or any doubts, you can definitely write it to the comment section. Thank you for watching.